I'm making a software as a service company called UpSocial, where users can enter their social media accounts and track all of their profiles growth in one simple dashboard. This video will show the progress that I've made in the past two weeks of working on this website and maybe even give you some motivation to work on your own projects. Let's start at the beginning. I first thought this project was going to be quite simple. All you have is just a dashboard that users enter their social media names into and then on the back end, I asked that social media's API to provide me back the data for that user. Repeat that process for each social media and boom, the project's done. And it's still kind of like that, but it's not that simple. Before we get into that, let's quickly run through what I've built since last time we talked. I've implemented a proof of concept for the application. What I mean by that is that all the moving parts of the site have been built out and they're all kind of working together in the most basic way possible. We have an authentication system, a database, and functions on the back end that ask for data about a user's social media profile. That's the app. So why is it so difficult? In the previous video, we talked about how things change over time. You can't just ask for a social media profile's data because in a day from now, that data being pulled is gonna be out of date. Each user also has multiple social media platforms. Those platforms have multiple pieces of content that are also changing over time. Not only that, running all of this costs money. Well, not at the moment because I don't have any users, but when I do, it's gonna cost more and more as it grows. These are all problems that will need to be solved. But first, I'll demonstrate the process of how this works so far. First things first, a user's gonna have to sign up either with email and password or some of these social media platforms. By the way, we cut out Twitter from the authentication process. Once they're signed in, they add a social media platform to their account, which triggers a function in the cloud to go and get the data for that user's social media profile. The code for that looks like this. Pretty simple, just ask for the data, write it to the database, write it to the database again, and write it to the database. Wait, what? All right, so here's where we deviated from the plan a little bit from last time. I created an overview document in each user's social sub collection inside their user document. By the way, we have another cloud function that gets triggered to create a user document every time a user signs up. We'll also need these user documents to manage subscription payments using a library called Stripe. We'll talk about that more later as well. The reason for the overview document is to load the overview of a user's social media profile as quickly as possible on the dashboard. This overview document gets overwritten with the latest data every single time this function gets run, which is currently set to once an hour. You'll also notice these other documents with huge numbers as their name. This number is actually the amount of milliseconds that have elapsed since January 1st, 1970. Since JavaScript has a function that converts that number into a date and time, which we'll use for mapping the growth of a social media profile over time. By the way, if you're not familiar with this UI, this is called Firebase. It's a set of tools provided by Google to help build out apps quickly with features like authentication and cloud databases. In this case, I'm using Cloud Firestore, which is one of the two options for storing data inside Firebase. In a nutshell, the user triggers this function and the code gets their profile from the social media API and comes back and stores it in the database. We're overriding this overview document each time that this function gets run and we're also producing a historic document which captures the data as it was at the specific time the function was run. This way, we have the most up-to-date data inside the overview document and we also have a large collection of data from the past about the social profile as well. This function currently runs every hour, so the data is gonna be refreshed for the user every hour on their dashboard. This leads us to the actual dashboard itself. Once the user has added their profile to the dashboard, they'll be shown a loading screen while we fetch the data in the background. Once it comes back, they can see how many subscribers they have on their YouTube channel inside our dashboard. As of right now, I've only got the very basic subscriber metric on the UI for YouTube, and I've also added support for my blogging platform of choice, which is a platform called Hashnode. And as you can see, we've got the follower metric for that Hashnode platform as well. Here's a list of all the social media platforms that I want to support. And here's a list of the social media platforms that have supported developer APIs to get data from. And here's a list of social media platforms that we've implemented so far. The main struggle that I'm having right now is that each API requires a different method of extracting the data out of it. For example, Hashnode allows public access to that API and it's using GraphQL behind the scenes, so I need to write a GraphQL query to get the data for a specific user. Whereas the YouTube API requires an API key to be passed with the requests and it's a REST API rather than a GraphQL endpoint, so the code looks almost completely different. To take it a step further, some APIs require the user to sign in and authenticate requests to get data for their profile, which makes it even more difficult to implement. 
And for those platforms without an API, the only real option that I can think of right now for getting data off of those sites is to use web scraping using a tool like Playwright or Puppeteer. Web scraping is a whole nother can of worms that I don't want to get into right now. So let's talk about the business side of things. Initially, I wasn't even considering turning this into a software as a service to make money, but I actually think this is something that people might pay for. Now, I haven't put a ton of thought into the payment system behind this website, but this is what I've come up with in the little time that I have spent. I'm going to be using a freemium model for UpSocial. If you're not aware of the freemium model, it's a very common payment method, especially within the startup space, where you offer users the basic features of the application for free, but lock the more advanced features of the application behind a subscription paywall. This is a great way to attract new users to your site more easily, since it's less friction for users to get started. It also allows users to try out the product before paying for something that they don't even know if they like yet. So it takes a lot less marketing effort to create new customers. For the users who pay a $5 monthly subscription to UpSocial, they will have access to these three features. The ability to add more than three social media platforms onto their dashboard, hourly updated data rather than the daily for free users, and the ability to export their data into a CSV file so that they can use it for their own personal use. The way that I'm going to manage these payments is with a library called Stripe. Stripe is a way of implementing subscription payments into your web applications, and it has a relatively new extension within Firebase called Run Subscription Payments with Stripe. The extension syncs up customer subscription statuses from Stripe to Cloud Firestore. So Firebase adds information about each user inside their profile as well as within the user document inside our users collection. That makes it super easy for me to check which users have access to paid features within Firebase and it's all included within a pre-built extension inside Firebase, which I'm already using. You can actually check out all of the features that I showed within this video on a live deployment updated every time I make a commit at upsocial.app. I would love to see you guys try it out and test it and see what you think so far and try and break it as best as possible. That would be awesome as well. But other than that, that's all I have to show you guys for this kind of devlog style update video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please remember to hit the like button. And if you want to see more about this project in the future, more videos and more tutorial style videos of the tech stack behind it as well, consider subscribing to the channel as it really does help me out. Other than that, thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day.